Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Eric Drazen, the proprietor of Oakland Tobacconist, and this with me today is John Bastido, and you're watching Oakland Tobacconist. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, John, have you actually tried this particular cigar? I have not tried this one. Okay, so today we are uh, reviewing the Oliva Serie V in Double Robusto. It is a uh, 5 by 54 stick. Um, uses Lajero Sun Grown Tobacco. So it is extremely strong and rich tobacco. It's an old favorite. The, the first time I actually ever tried this cigar was uh, in this size. And uh, I've since then tried the 6x60, the Churchill, the Torpedo. I'd have to say this size and the Torpedo, I think, are personal favorites of mine out of them. So hopefully we can catch a good amount of this uh, of this footage before we lose, lose too much of the sun. Fall hours are happening and that's changing. <laughs> As the seasons change. That's good. So right off the bat, oh. <laughs> it's like a, for me, like a blast of flavor like instantly yeah you work up at the neighboring farm Los Rios Rancho yes and so so what would you say is like your your job title huh. as it were that, that's a difficult one to describe uh, I I I have to write it down one of these days just so that <laughs> I can remember them all um, you hit all points of the compass yeah because I I hit everything um, normally I work in the office so I um, I'm doing the accounting, uh, HR type stuff. I'm also dealing with um, all of our technology um, and kind of how that integrates into everybody else's life on the farm. Um, so all of the other managers kind of come to me with their problems and I help solve them. So how do you fit that into a job description? <laughs> it, it's just a rack full of hats. That's, that's yeah. how I describe it. I just, okay, go put that one down and take up the next and move on. and. So That's when you goes. when you say like HR and some of the accounting, when there's a new employee that comes on, are you dealing with them like firsthand? Like, I, I don't deal with them firsthand. I deal with them secondhand. Okay. So whoever's hiring them would meet them and would interview them, bring them on board. Then I deal with all the paperwork right after that, <laughs> and taking care of getting them into the system, making sure they get their first paycheck. Okay. That everything goes smoothly. So that that can get pretty pretty it, hectic. It gets pretty hectic. There's. <laughs> There's a lot to do, especially in fall. Uh, most yeah. of the year, having that many hats just makes your life really rich and really enjoyable because you're kind of moving from one thing to the next and yeah. you're able to keep your life interesting. But when you uh, hit fall, suddenly it kind of piles up higher than you can get to. Yeah, so like, I mean, because I've been in the Glen for also about 10 or 11 years. So like fall season, apple season is insane over the weekend. And, and, I mean, it's, what would you say, thousands of people? Running Disneyland for a day and then, <laughs> and then not having Disneyland. Uh, I think so, a lot of this flavor is starting to come through. Yeah. So, I mean, I got, like, the thing I love about the Siri V is it has, like, up front, for me, like, it has that, like, black pepper, like, spice on top. Mm -hmm. and, but there's this, like, hint of, like, sweetness underneath that's, like, right on the tongue. Yeah, definitely. Really good. So we're gonna continue smoking this and we'll come back with second, third and see how the body of the cigar changes at all. So we're back, we're at the second, third at this point. Uh, it's kind of mellowed a little bit as far as the initial light up. Um, Just sent some through my nose, trying to taste it more. I feel like I'm almost getting like some chocolate. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. That might be just my burned nose now. <laughs> no, I can see like chocolate. Like a, almost like a caramelized chocolate. Yeah, yeah, it's really like kind of sweet and rich. Yeah. So as far as as far as apple season is going for this year, um, how would you say the apple crop has been? So this year, what we what we like to say uh, when it's not at peak performance is it's a moderate crop. So okay. It's basically uh, it's when you have some varieties that are up but then other varieties have kind of waned a little bit. Um, a big part of that is uh, biannualism, uh, big word there. Uh, basically when apple trees, if they're not managed properly, um, they'll get into the cycle of producing really heavy crop one year, next year you get virtually nothing, and then a big crop the next year, virtually nothing. And the trees okay. kind of go through this. 
And so if you're if you're getting into a good cycle of thinning your fruit, and as long as you don't have any crazy freak storms that destroy the apple crop, that can kind of just come out of nowhere and take stuff out. But as far as the farmer's concerned, uh, it's that actual process of managing the trees. If you don't fully manage the trees, then they will just kind of go into the cycle of produ production mm. and then no production, production, no production. Uh, a big part of it is thinning early enough because you actually, you you in a sense have to trick the tree <laughs> into thinking that the... Like shocking it. Well, you're, you're kind of tricking it early because you're trying to pick the fruit off right after it's set and you're tricking it into thinking that it didn't actually produce that heavy that year. Oh, okay. It's almost what you're <laughs> you're tricking it into, and then it puts a lot more of its energy into the apples that you did leave behind. So you get big fruit. A lot of years, with that biannualism, if you're not thinning well enough, you get really small apples, lots of them, but really small. Mm. Um, a lot of times you actually have to do chemical thinning, so you use uh, certain chemical products that'll actually, in a sense, burn the tree a little bit just enough and there's a lot of organic compounds that you can use for that uh, where it's still organic but you're burning the fruit when it's that small and it actually takes out a percentage of your crop on purpose oh wow so and that's the best way to do it because that's that's how they do it up in washington and stuff um, what would you say is out of all the varieties because i know you guys have tons of varieties what would you say is probably your favorite the rome beauties are probably one of my favorite apples they have a really floral note to them uh, they're really crisp really hard um, like just a nice snap to the apple beautiful coloring uh, they come out with like reds and greens all over and it's just kind of a beautiful pattern we're uh, coming down to the final third so we'll get you on the very last third and see what our conclusion is yeah so we're in our final third um, I uh, I think I will always I mean because it's an old favorite I always rate this one very high. <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. Um, definitely I would say uh, it's one of the staples if you enjoy like the sun-grown spicy level cigar. Yeah. It's definitely one to enjoy. For the shop we've started staying open uh, later on Fridays until 9 o'clock so if you want to join us after work we're also open on Saturdays and Sundays and also Los Rios has similar hours Friday, Saturday, and Sunday which you guys are yep. picking on Fridays right? We are we're picking on Fridays uh, even Thursdays too right now uh, so to tomorrow we'll have uh, picking available and we're we've got extended hours on the weekend so we're staying open until six o'clock up there. Awesome. Yeah. And I also heard a rumor that at Wilshire's Packing Shed, where Oakland Tobacconist is housed, there might be coffee this weekend. There could be some coffee this there weekend. There might be coffee. So uh, come on up and give us a visit if you haven't gotten a chance. Um, thanks again, John, for joining us. Thank you very much for the cigar. Yeah, enjoying the cigar. Uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching Oakland Tobacconist.